Hello there, welcome back to another session on cyber security. In this session, we are going to understand one of the cross site descripting attacks by name Reflected XSS attack. First, we'll take a demo of this attack. We'll see how this attack works and then we'll come back and then we'll understand the concepts behind this attack and we'll also take a look at how to prevent this attack. So, first, let us take a look at the demonstration of this attack. For this, I have an application. So what this application does is it's going to get the username. So if I'm going to type the username as uh, Chris, it's going to search for this user in the database and it's going to fetch us the salary back. So the database I'm having is a MySQL database and the table name here is an employee table. So inside, inside this table, I have the username and salary. So for a given username, it's going to search the salary and print the salary back to the user. So let's take a look at this uh, specific output. So when I submit this, so the server side script which I have written in PHP actually searches for this username uh, Chris in the database and it fetches the salary back. So when it is displaying the output, it's going to display it like this. You searched for, so whatever input I have given here is displayed here. So this is actually sent by the server. And this is the data from the database. Username is Chris and salary is 9000. So like that, you can search for uh, any of the users in the database. So I can search for Matthew and the salary will be displayed as 60,000. So what will be the output for this specific user is you search for Matthew. Username is Matthew. Salary is 60,000. So this is that simple application which we are going to use for understanding reflected XSS attack. So I've coded the server side script in PHP and the database I'm using is a MySQL DB. So what is that uh, happening here is, uh, let me again run this application. So here, say instead of uh, Chris or uh, Matthew, the username, if we r give some input, which is actually a script, Say I'm just going to give the input as a script alert. It's a JavaScript I'm giving here. Hello. And let's uh, close the script tag. So instead of giving the username, an hacker can actually give some kind of uh, JavaScript code. And uh, when you submit, you see the JavaScript code is executing inside the browser. So what's happening here is, uh, What's happening here is, see, when I enter Chris, this specific uh, response from the server, what the server does is takes in whatever input the user has given. Say, if the user has entered Chris, the server takes this input and then it just reflects that output back to the browser. So, this, the browser just uh, displays whatever that is coming back from the server. So, if you're entering Chris, it's going to be Chris here. If you are going to enter some script code, that script is actually executed by the browser because it's JavaScript code. So this uh, kind of an vulnerability can be exploited by the hackers. Uh, let me show you how an hacker can exploit this uh, vulnerability. Actually, an hacker can uh, write some script like this script. And you can actually divert your entire page, window.location.href. I have coded a page called hacker underscore login dot php and uh, you can just like that divert your entire page uh, using this weakness. Say, let me submit this. So, what happened was this uh, specific JavaScript code was executing on the browser and it diverted me to another page login for the reward hurry. So let me enter my username as Satish and my password is also my name Satish and I submit. So I'm just getting uh, diverted to the home page. I'm not sure what happened, but behind these scenes, you can very well see here, there is this hacker table and uh, this hacker has captured my username and password. So this uh, happens uh, when you actually enter the script directly in the um, input text box you can ask me uh, we'll be entering that kind of an input here so what really happens here is the hacker is going to craft an url and send it to you so 
he may send it to you in an email, in a phishing mail like this. Hurry up for the reward. And you're going to get an URL. And this URL is going to be from a trusted domain. Say if you're going to trust codespindle.com, you're going to get the URL from codespindle.com but with the embedded JavaScript code which is actually diverting your uh, page to the hackers page. So now when you click on this link, you can very well see that's actually diverting. This code is executing on your browser and this is the page of the hacker. And it is from a trust trusted source. Say it can be codespindle.com or uh, any other site that you trust. But since it has got that embedded uh, JavaScript, it's able to run the specific hackers page in your browser. And if you enter your credentials, uh, thinking that it's from a trusted source, what happens behind these scenes is the hacker is going to capture your credentials as shown here. So here you see, hacker is getting all your credentials. So how this entire thing is uh, working up is, so the hacker is going to send you a link, say it's going to be from a trusted site, but within that uh, URL, it is going to have the embedded JavaScript code, which will divert your page, which will actually uh, take your uh, location to the hacker's page, and it is this embedded JavaScript code. And this executes on the browser because of the uh, reflected XSS vulnerability. What do you mean by reflected XSS vulnerability? If I enter Chris here and submit, the server is going to take that specific input and reflect it back to the browser. So without any check. So if I'm going to enter a script, the server is going to take the script and send it back to the browser. Here the browser will execute that script and then whatever that is present in the script is going to work. So if the hacker is going to write a script diverting uh, the action to his own page, that specific script will execute here and then it will take you to the hacker's page. That's what is happening behind the scenes. And this is called a reflected XSS attack because whatever that is sent as input from the client is reflected back to the client from the server and without any checks. And this will lead to execution of JavaScript code on the browser and attacks can happen. So I hope you have followed the demonstration now. Let's take a look at the concepts. Let's have some visualization. I know some students may be still uh, confused on how things work. Let's have a visualization of what happened behind the scenes so that you get a better understanding of what reflected XSS attack is all about. So let's take a look at the definition of reflected XSS attack. So reflected cross-site scripting or reflected XSS attack is a non-persistent XSS attack. So what is this? It is a type of uh, cybersecurity vulnerability where malicious JavaScript code is injected into a website through a user's request. So we were injecting malicious script using the text box. So that is the request made by the user. So what happens is this specific malicious script is then reflected back to the user's browser. So the server is going to take that input and it is going to send that input back to the um, browser without any checks it's not going to sanitize the input it takes the input and sends it back to the browser since the browser trusts the website it's going to run that specific code and that becomes the malicious script which executes on the client so this is uh, the concept behind and reflected xss attack so i have some visualizations here for you just explaining what went through in that application. Let's take a look at it. So here I have my client and uh, here is that specific uh, page which is loaded initially. And I'm going to type the username as Chris. So once when I type the username as Chris, this specific uh, information is stacked to the URL and sent to the server. So you can very well see here, username is equal to Chris. So whatever input entered by the user is actually mapped to the URL and sent. I have used a get request here so that we understand how things are transferred to the server uh, through this URL. It is an intentional use. Normally we use a post request here. So what is that we understand here is whatever input given by the user is transferred to the server. And what the server does is for this specific user, Chris, it searches the MySQL database server. So once when it gets the salary of 9,000, 
So now it is going to craft a response. So the response here is uh, you searched for, actually this is uh, you searched for and whatever input that the user has sent, say the Chris, is just going to send back, is just going to be sent back by the server. And uh, this is the data from the database. So once when this response comes back, that will be rendered on the web page and you can see you search for Chris. So what is happening here is Chris was entered by the user. It was tagged to the URL, sent to the server. Server just takes that uh, input, again sends it back to the client. So you search for whatever username that the user has entered and the results from the database. So here the server is reflecting server is reflecting the input entered by the user without performing any checks. So this is actually the output of the application. So what can go wrong here? So instead of giving the username, if you give any script, it can even be an HTML code. So you give some kind of script. What happens is the script is actually sent as part of the URL. The entire script is sent as part of the URL to the server. And now the server is going to search. Obviously, it's not going to find any user because we are entering a script. There's no username like that. But here the weakness is the server is going to reflect back that script. So what is that the server is going to do? It's going to reflect back. Say you search for whatever input the user has entered. It's just going to reflect it back like this. So you can very well see it's just reflecting it back without any checks. It just reflects the script back and username not found is the message. So this script comes back. So what this browser does is since it's coming from a trusted uh, source, it's going to execute that code. Because the domain is trusted, so it's going to execute that code. So what is the code it's going to execute? It's going to execute this script code and uh, the script executes on the client. So what the hacker does is, uh, instead of just uh, giving a hello message here, the hacker can write a script like this. Dot, what is that? Window dot location. Sorry for this. Let me write it legibly here. So it is this script the hacker writes. It is window dot location dot href. So this script when it executes, it's going to take us to a new window, and uh, there it's going to execute this specific page. It's going to take us uh, to this specific page hacker underscore login dot php. And is going to close the script. So hacker is going to embed this specific uh, JavaScript code inside an URL, and that URL will be from the trusted source. And once when you click on that URL, this specific uh, window will be opened, pointing to the hacker's login.php page. So when you enter the credentials, trusting the uh, source, trusting the domain your credentials will be captured because this is the page of the hacker. So this is what is happening behind a reflected XSS attack. So what do you mean by reflected XSS? Whatever JavaScript that has been given as input is given to the server and the server without checking what is the input is going to reflect that uh, script code back to the browser. And since this script is coming from an, a trusted domain from the server. So the browser is going to execute that specific code and the hacker will embed any kind of malicious script which can capture your cookies, which can take you to a separate page. It can do a lot of damage. So when that script executes, the users trust that page and then when they enter the data, the hacker is going to capture it. So this is how a reflected XSS attack works. Let's check it. Let's take a look at how to prevent it. How will you prevent this attack? For prevention of this attack, it's very simple. There are a few stages for prevention. Say, always sanitize your input. Check for characters. Say, why we need uh, 
keywords like script in our input text. All we need is an username like Chris, Matthew. I don't think any users will have the username as script. So you identify such keywords, you identify uh, malicious uh, symbols in your uh, input. You sanitize the input. You sanitize the input on the client side. You sanitize the input at the server side. So you're going to avoid any such scripts, malicious scripts by from being injected into your web application. The next thing is when the server is sending the response back, so normally in PHP, we'll uh, echo whatever the response we have received from the client directly. So we'll just echo, this is the response, say Chris is coming back or script is coming back, we'll echo it. So how you can prevent this is you can use some special methods like HTML special characters. So there are certain methods in every language. In PHP, we have HTML special characters and then we'll echo this. So even if you're going to echo the script, the script will be converted to characters that will be displayed on the web page as JavaScript. So it will not come in as a script, it will come in as text. So the code will be displayed here. So you'll understand this. So what we'll do now is we'll go back and change our specific uh, server-side script to actually use this method and we'll see how the specific attack is averted. Now let's uh, go back to our uh, code. So here is this uh, server side script where I am echoing you search for whatever input that the user has entered. So instead of directly uh, getting that specific input from the form and echoing it back to the client, what I will do here is I will use the special method. So I'll be using this method HTML special characters and then I'll be passing whatever I'm echoing back to the client, I'll be passing that. So this is uh, that specific username which I'm sending back to my client. So I'll be putting that inside this method. What this method will do is it will convert those special characters. If a script is coming back, it's going to convert that special characters to text so that that text will be just shown on the web page instead of uh, being the JavaScript code that is executed. So let's make this change. Let's again uh, run our code. Let's uh, get back here. So what's going to happen here is if you're going to type in the username Chris, you search for Chris. So what happens if the user enters some kind of uh, JavaScript code here, say script and then alert. Hello, some kind of JavaScript code is coming up. Script. Now, what happens is since we are echoing this back using the HTML special characters function, so this will be converted to text and displayed as text. So you see here now the script is not working, it's just displayed as text on the screen. So using such uh, simple methods in your uh, code will avoid such dangerous malicious scripts executing on your application so that's how a reflected xss attack works i hope you were able to follow all the concepts on reflected xss i've already posted a video lecture on persistent xss wherein we store the javascript code in the database and it gets executed for every user who wants to view that specific code so i'll be leaving the link for persistent xss in the uh, description below have a look at it and i hope you are able to follow this specific lecture on reflected xss if you have any questions leave those questions in the comments below i will try and answer your questions that's it for this session we'll be taking a look at another interesting concept in ethical hacking soon take care